All right, 1020 now. Welcome back. First alerts in place tonight, tomorrow, and Monday. Mainly what we're watching is that severe potential. Yes, a few isolated tornadoes. I've had a few questions. That will be on Mondays when that chance comes through. I'll explain. Then the threat for a larger tornado I don't think is there. I think more isolated, smaller, what we call brief spin-ups along more of a line of storms, what's called a QLCS. I'll show you all of that on Futurecast. First, though, let's talk about what's ahead for us and what the risks are, because I know this is the main thing. We haven't seen this in a while. What are the impacts? I think large hail, a lower end threat with these. Any more isolated storms that are on their own tomorrow afternoon and Monday afternoon, those would have more of the chance of some large hail. Damaging winds are going to be the most likely thing out of this, especially along the front on Monday and tomorrow afternoon. And if any storms do uh, become strong overnight tonight, a very isolated tornado risk becoming a little more possible on Monday with that line. Again, we'll talk about it. We'll show you on Futurecast and flooding, which doesn't always get talked about very often, but some of these storms are actually going to hold heavy rainfall vertically. The atmosphere can hold more, something we call precipitable water. So let's take a look first at Fort Worth towards the north and west, looking in the direction of Saginaw from downtown Fort Worth. Saw a little lightning earlier. These cells are starting to get going off to our west and primarily our western counties. There you go. Graham down towards Breckenridge. And it's all ahead of this preceding line further off to the west. A little impulse of activity there. Let's go over to the maps and show you more in detail here. Uh, there's that broken line approaching. First, though, this isolated activity being pulled out ahead of it from south to north. Quite a bit of lightning now up in these cells just to our north and west. Also just west of Mineral Wells, Graham, Breckenridge. So these have picked up again in the past 45 minutes or so. This trend should continue as that line approaches out of the West. Let's take advanced radar real quick. There you go. So we can see a little more detail here with our advanced radar here uh, at the station. A little more lightning there approaching Wichita Falls. Still pretty far to our West. Uh, Jacksboro just approaching Jack County. A couple of lightning strikes there West of Mineral Wells. So this activity as that line approaches from the West should fill in a little bit more into the evening. But right now the short term models are having a hard time picking up on what they think will happen. It's all this big jet stream plume. You see this uh, darker shading here pushing in. That's your trough, your dip in the jet stream, forcing all of this up over the plain states and even some dry slots right through there. This is a powerful jet stream system that if we saw in March or April or May would cause even more severe weather. Let's take, uh, first of all, this model. I'll show you a different one in a second. The high res, uh, this model called the HER by 1.15 a.m. has some of that activity approaching our northwestern counties. And then it actually keeps a complex alive into our northern counties, but it's trending further north. Earlier it showed it down into Denton and Collin counties. Good news is that's trended north a little bit. Any spots where these land though, if it comes four, five, six, seven, eight a.m., any spots where we see these land on radar, just know these could produce heavy rainfall and some localized flooding. Then tomorrow afternoon, I'm a little more, uh, I'm watching this more cautiously. Let's put it that way. Tomorrow afternoon, we're talking that later football game. All right, we're watching this. You may be inside watching football, relaxing, after getting errands done or church storms should start to line up more of a broken line. Now notice that model pushes those northeast pretty quickly, but those would have severe potential. Let's take another model for you. This one shows similar activity tonight that line taking off north, but look at tomorrow afternoon. It kind of does the same thing. It also weakens it as it approaches us, but we'll have to watch that very closely. And then finally, here we go towards Monday. This is when we'll get what's called a QLCS, a linear convective system. It means more of a broken line with maybe some minor pockets of rotation. Sometimes you get brief spin ups in these. So on Monday, I would not be surprised to see a few tornado warnings if we do see a line move through. That's why we're in that elevated severe threat. So something to watch closely again for Monday. We'll cover more of this coming up in just a few minutes. We'll break down each of it there, but you saw most of the models that we see here. All in all, the rain chance up to 100% there for Monday. The good news, it's out of here by election day before another break in the pattern late next week.